let's talk a little industrialization. First of all, why does it happen? Well, anything this big, there's going to be more than one reason for it. And it's, it's a combination of things. It's new technologies. You think of things like the light bulb and things like that that are coming about. It's natural resources. The United States has nothing if not a ton of minerals and coal and all of the things that you need for the Industrial Revolution. Third, people. The U.S. is booming with people and immigrants and they make it happen. They can work in the factories and they can also buy all the stuff that they're going to be making in the factories. So it works. Don't forget entrepreneurs. If you've been reading, you've probably been reading about people like Andrew Carnegie or Rockefeller, and they are huge because they are out there, I guess you could say, moving and shaking and figuring out what the next new thing is and investing money. Investing money is another big thing. The government is part of that. Entrepreneurs are part of that. But think about it. It takes money to build a factory, to get things done. Where is that coming from? Some of it's private sources, some of it's the government. Um, particularly if you think about the railroad, the railroad is getting tons and tons of government subsidies. Also, the railroad in and of itself drives the revolution. Why? Because number one, you need workers and steel to build the railroad. Second, once you have the railroad built, you've got got all the shipping and the supplies that's done on the railroad, the people who run the railroad. It offers many opportunities for factories to ship their stuff out. It's a huge deal. Now, what are the consequences? Well, the consequences are so many, I can hardly list them here. But the biggest of them are suddenly goods are cheap and plentiful and people can go out and buy them. Suddenly, your day looks different. It's suddenly you are moving towards a factory, maybe from a farm, and it's a different life, and you have to follow the clock and that kind of thing. The other thing is environmentally, they are looking at the Industrial Revolution and going, well, was that the best thing? They didn't always take the precautions that we take today. And the third thing is look at it from the perspective of the people who own these factories. Not only do they need cheap resources to build the stuff that they want to build, but they also need a market for it. They need people to buy it. And by the 1890s, that means we need cheap things from abroad. We need cheap things from Cuba. Um, Hawaii was abroad then. And Alaska or the Philippines or we need a place to stop to refuel the ship, some of those islands. Why is big that way? So again, something to think about. It's going to push the United States into a world power because we want those places to stop. We want those bases, we want those markets and they won't be stopped. So that is just a short little introduction into the beginning and the consequences of the Industrial Revolution. So, be sure to be reading more in your textbook in Chapter 18 and have a look at the PowerPoint on industrialization as well. I look forward to reading your discussion posts. Happy history!